making the Hyundai Santa Cruz bed even more useful. Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to Rob Motive MT. Today, we're gonna do a little project to make the Santa Cruz bed even a little bit more useful. Now, what I've done, I went to the Lowe's and I picked up some wood, three pieces, uh, because I'm gonna make a stop, if you will, for the front part of the bed, right across here. Let me go ahead, get this wood out of here, and I'll show you what it is that I'm gonna do. But real quick, before we get to that, if you're new and you haven't before, go ahead and smash that subscribe button and click that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. Okay, we've got the wood out, by the way, hauling in the Santa Cruz, piece of cake, awesome. Didn't exceed the weight limit at all. So let's take a look in case you wanna follow along and see what it is that I'm doing. I have three pieces of wood. I have, let's see, a one by two by six, that would be this piece. And then I have a three quarter by nine and a quarter by six. Uh, that would be this piece down here underneath, the bigger piece. And then a one by six by six right here. What I'm going to do, I want a shelf across the front. Something that comes down right across here. Not really a shelf, more of a wall. But something that comes across right here so that when I put groceries or whatever here, they don't end up up there when I get home. And you know that's what's gonna happen. Everything is gonna roll up there and that's where it's gonna be. Now, I also wanted to make it in such a way that if I wanted to open this up, it wouldn't be in the way. And the way I'm gonna achieve that is by making it so it can pull up out of these little notches on the side. There are more notches back there. I can just pick it up so it has to fit in between the wheel wells slide it back and drop it in those notches and then it will clear this area and I'll be able to open it up with no problem. At least that is my, my thinking, my thought. So what I need to do, I need to cut these boards and then I'll show you how I'm gonna put it together. I'll take you step by step through the whole project. Cost to do this, 39 bucks, it won't break the bank. It'll be a little bit more if you don't have any paint at home because I am gonna paint this black and then I'm gonna put a decal on there. Uh, you'll have to tune in later if you want to see what it says. So it could cost you a little bit more if you don't have paint. I have tons of paint here, so I'm not spending any more money. Anyway, let's get started and we'll see what it looks like. First board we're going to cut is this narrower one right here. That's going to be the board that fits in these two slots across. My measurement, 53 and a half inches. That should fit down in those slots just as good as I want it to. I want a little bit of movement. I don't want it real tight. So 53 and a half inches, we're gonna go ahead and make the cut. And then we'll see if I was right. We've got the board in there. It's pretty good. Obviously it would be better if it was a little bit wider. You can see we do have some space there. I could put some spacers in. Maybe I'll do that down the road, I don't know. But as far as it fitting side to side, looks pretty good. Next, I have to get my little bottom piece cut. It's kind of a brace, if you will. That's the purpose of this. So I need to measure for that. We'll get this cut, and then we cut the big boy, which is the wall, and then we put it all together. We've got the brace board cut, I guess we'll call this. It's what's gonna brace the wall that's coming down. Cut this at 49 and a half inches. Now we need to measure in between the wheel wells so that the biggest piece, the wall, will fit in between. You'll see why. Okay, we've got the final board cut. This is the actual wall. This is what's gonna fit in between to hold things together. There will be a little gap on each side, but it should be okay. And that's to enable it to fit in between the wheel wells when I need to get it out of the way to open the little trunk that's in there. You'll see as we go. I cut that at 41 and a quarter inches. And that's the last of the cutting, hopefully. It's all done, for better or worse. Let's take a look at it, I'll show you what I did. And maybe you'll start to get an idea of what I'm trying to accomplish here. I have the top board, this turned around, is what's gonna fit in the slots, both up here and back there. And then I have just a brace, obviously, so I can put the wall, if you will, 
uh, on the front of it. Now you could turn this around either way, I guess. You can face it one way for less room in the front or the other way for more. So let me go ahead, put it in there, and I'll show you how it's supposed to work. That's how it's gonna ride. And you notice again, there are gaps on the ends, of course, right? Well, that's to be able to clear the wheel wells. And the reason I wanted to do that is because we have this trunk under here and with it sitting there, I can't open the trunk. Well, I didn't want to defeat the purpose of that. So you lift it up on one side, take a trip over here to the other side, lift it up like so, and then you should, in theory, be able to just slide it back. And I'm not looking at doing this often. I mean, if you're accessing that trunk a lot, well, then maybe you'll do it more often. But you can see it fits in between the wheel wells, hence that gap. It clears the tonneau cover, obviously, and it's out of the way. So now I can still use this when I want to and have the ability to pull this thing forward and stop stuff from rolling to the back of the bed. So let's go ahead and pull it forward and see how that works. You could even mount a handle or something on there, I suppose, if you really wanted to, to maybe make it easier to pull. But again, I'm really not looking at using it backwards like that often. There you go. That sets it where I want it to be. And that then will allow me to add stuff so that it doesn't roll around and end up in the front of the bed. That's the idea. Now, as far as finishing it, oh, one more thing I wanted to mention. You could flip it around and not have the overhang under there, if you will, if you wanted to shorten this a little bit as well. Uh, there's other things you could do. You could put some padding on the end so maybe it doesn't move quite as much. It doesn't move a lot anyway, but it is gonna move a little. I may do that. I may put some kind of foam or rubber or something on the ends just to secure it even a little bit more. We'll see. I could also put something in here to take up the gap, a rubber stopper, if you will. You can get those at Lowe's, I think. I may do something like that, we'll see. Depends on how much it bugs me, I suppose. Um, it's not done. I am gonna paint it. I'm gonna paint it black, I think, just to kind of have it blend in with the rest of the truck. You can get more creative. I could paint it the color of the truck or any other accent color I wanted so that when you open the trunk, it pops, or the tailgate, I should say. Um, I am gonna put some kind of a decal across there uh, stay tuned for that later on. I will do a video down the road showing you what the complete finished product looks like, but I didn't figure you'd want to watch me paint. So that's my plan. Paint it black, let it dry. I'm going to order a decal to put across the front of it to kind of pop a little bit when you open the tailgate. Looks pretty cool like that. I think I have something similar in the Jeep Gladiator. I call it the Gladi board. If you want to check that out, go over to Rob Motive JT and you can find out what I did over there. It actually came out really cool, I think. Anyway, that is my uh, cargo retaining board. Let's call it that. The cargo retaining board or wall, whatever you want. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Better solution? I'd be very curious to know and maybe an improvement on this one. Let me know. Also, if you didn't in the beginning, make sure you smash that subscribe button and click that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. I do have two additional channels. Rob Motive JT, as I mentioned, all about the Jeep Gladiator. And Rob Motive, all about Toyota Tacomas. Check them out, and if you're interested, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. Stay creative out there. Bye.